welcome to the seventh video in my Renaissance Warfare series. In this video I'll detail the steps I went through to assemble my religious fanatics army. I had quite a few problems um, assembling this army and deciding what I wanted in it, most of which I think stemmed from the fact that it's not a historical army, so I had to make decisions based on what I thought would be good, fun, interesting or which miniatures I wanted to include. A lot of backtracking and changes of plans ensued, but it's done now, so let's get on with the details. Right from the very beginning, I knew I wanted the core of my infantry units to be flagellants, and because I want to use metal miniatures wherever possible, that meant um, Games Workshop flagellants, which can be quite pricey. I spent a bit of time on eBay looking to source some at a reasonable price and eventually I found um, a set of 32, exactly the number I needed, uh, painted flagellants for four pounds each from a single seller. That looked like the best deal I was going to get so I bought them and um, here they are. Uh, they're painted very nicely, I didn't change the paint quite happy with them. Um, I lightened the flesh by adding another layer of highlight to nearly everybody because their flesh was very dark and I did um, I fixed tiny chipping on, on some of them and then I mounted them uh, eight to a base. Um, the mounting is different. Than these. I had to cut them off their slotter bases and if you look you can see that each of them has uh, a pin drilled into the like the middle of their cassock or robe um, and then I terrained the base and painted it and then I drilled through and just stuck everyone on and then um, filed off the bottom so they are nice and nice oh I'm sorry getting back in the picture they're nice and firmly fixed and um, make a good motley assortment of um, mully fighters Originally they weren't going to have any flags and so I decided I'd mount them on bigger bases. Well, I planned to mount them on bigger bases and they'd be led by um, the body of a saint. I had some impaled skeletons I found on eBay um, being pushed in a wheelbarrow by a nun which sounded pretty good in theory but uh, at the end of the day as you see I um, skipped that idea, cut out some weapons and gave them flags. The majority of the flags are these rather nice demonic flags. Again, I found them off eBay. Apparently they are the flags that some Duke used round about the time, but um, they look fairly suitable. This is my sort of lead uh, flagellant, and he's this base has got two banners. It's got a red uh, Landshek banner and... Uh, and another one with stuff on it. Okay, so that was the flagellants dealt with. For the missile armed wings, I went with crossbow armed priests. These are from West Wind Productions. Um, they come in little packs of four. Half of them have crossbows so that's good enough to make the missile troops and on a couple of bases there's uh, one or two throwing bombs or grenades here's a grenadier at the front so that went mostly according to plan they're decent enough figures. I like the style. It wasn't all plain sailing though. I initially planned to have one of the wings made up with a different set of priests. Um, still from West Wind, they were called uh, the Vatican Hit Squad, but they turned out to be not compatible and far too modern looking when I saw them sort of in the in the flesh. So um, another delay while I ordered eight more priests and. Um, painted them up to match the originals. With the four infantry units finally sorted and complete, it was time for the artillery. 
these followed my initial plans quite nicely. All these miniatures here are from um, Lead Adventure miniatures. You can get them from Magister Militum in the UK. And as you can see, there are two bases of uh, powder pigs and a handler. Let's have a close up here. So nice, nice fat porkers um, with powder barrels strapped to them. Um, so the pigs and the handler are lead adventure miniatures. The, um, the wheelbarrow at the back is uh, MDF. That's from um, war bases. And uh, the little resin barrels I got off eBay. Um, and I think they work very well. And then um, I based one of the pigs with a barrel individually so that it can actually be sent across the battlefield to run into an opposing unit and um, and explode. While I was perusing this range on the Magister Militum site, I also decided to get this rather lovely bell cannon. Again, all metal, lead adventure miniatures. Great big bell turned into a cannon with a three-person crew. There's this um, legless chap on his trolley with the cannonballs and a couple of fierce women holding it. Um, this is not a cheap miniature. It's um, it's £30 for that set, but you know, this is still a pretty cheap hobby when it comes down to it. With the artillery going to plan, I thought I was onto a bit of a roll, so um, it was onto the swordsman. Now, as it turned out, the swordsmen were too numerous to fit on a on a single unit base, so they turned into war bands and, and went on onto um, eighty millimeter square bases. But that's fine. Swordsmen war bands doesn't make much difference. These are metal miniatures from Gripping Beast. Um, this unit here, a bunch of um, well, I call them heretic hunters. Um, they're Uh, I was going to say they're quite nice, but actually not quite nice, are they? They're quite unpleasant, but they're nice, nice miniatures in their uh, in their little conical hoods, um, with their torches and their barbed weapons. Um, very characterful, very pleasant. And then this set, this is actually two sets of four. Oops, get them in the front here. Um, these are witch hunters, and uh, again. Plenty of torches for a bit of burning and um, I guess more normal weapons, swords, axes, that sort of thing, maces. Um, again, lovely characterful models um, and no problems with them. They they did exactly what I was expecting them to do and all turned out beautifully. That brought me on to my last option which is cavalry and this gave me the most changes of mind, problems, whatever. Um, one thing I knew is I didn't want mounted peasants. Um, that would have elevated them from their lowly status and, uh, and ruined the theme. Now, originally I was going to make some battle wagons and I bought some uh, MDF Roman carts from uh, war bases and I was planning to have them armed with maybe some crossbow troops or something um, but that all seemed a bit too organized so um, in the end I went for stampeding cattle here we go I went for oxen because they're slow and therefore adds a bit of humor to the idea of stampeding cattle a bit like Austin Powers on his steamroller maybe Anyway, they're from uh, First Corps, and then they're being herded by uh, peasants from alternative armies. They're very heavy. There we go. So, six oxen and um, for the first time I didn't take out the bendy cast weapons because they're pretty well protected by the base so I've just left them on they haven't had more character um, and then there's the peasants are in a pack of five so there's three on this base 
It's a crossbow guy and a, it's a couple of bodyguards for the, the goader with his spear. Um, there we are. Two units of um, fearsome stampeding cattle. With the cavalry finally decided on and painted and based, uh, it was time for the um, for the command and uh, the religious leaders. The commander is this chap. I'm calling him the Grand Inquisitor. He is a one-piece resin figure, 3D printed resin figure from eBay. Um, he's very reasonably priced at 6.99. Um, and I can no longer remember the name of the range I got him from. Um, I was going to use more of the range, but the, the figures are very slight. He's saved by his voluminous robes and the fact he's on a fairly sizable horse um, with incense burners and stuff. But, but the two attendants to his horse were far too skinny and um, they just looked wrong compared to the metal miniatures, so they didn't get a look in. So he's my general, and then to go with him, I did two bases of monks as religious um, helpers. These are from First Corps. There's processing monks, come in a little set of four, metal, obviously, and then there are farming monks. Whoops, sorry, it is one-handed, it's not working. Right, farming monks. So um, uh, they're there to emphasize the peasants' kind of uh, connection to the land. Uh, while I was doing them, I also did this set of Perry miniatures. They do... Um, this probably won't go with this army. This will probably go with one of the... Um, maybe a Lanchex or something. But... Um, oh, sorry. So, two mounted um, priests, cardinals, whatever. One at the back, some very nice donkey. And then they also do... They come with the versions oh, on foot as well. Um, and they're lovely as you'd expect from Perry miniatures so um, because I was doing clergy and the colours about so I did them at the same time that was those and uh, that was it for the army all I needed now was some flavoursome scatter scenery and for flavoursome scatter scenery I settled on burning heretics so um, three seemed an adequate number they're the same miniature there we go uh, these are from Irregular Miniatures. Um, I think they're quite nice. I remembered having one of these many, many years ago. It took me ages to track down which manufacturer made it, but I found them eventually. And they can be dotted about the landscape of the battle just to, you know, remind everybody what, what fate is in store for them. And that's it. Finally, after a long, long time of planning, must be said and full starts my religious fanatics army is complete and i must say i'm um, i'm very pleased with it so that's six armies for this project originally planning four i upped that to six the sixth army was going to be ottoman turks but i haven't settled on a range of turks i like i would still want to do ottomans um so i'll be returning to do them at some point and I'd also like to move east a bit because the Perrys do a fantastic range of um, Korean soldiers and I could have Koreans against Samurai and what I'd really like is to add a third army into that mix and have some Ming Chinese but I can't find any that any ranges of Ming that are, are extensive enough to actually make an army from. At the moment on my paint table I have um, 24 Scottish cavalry I went back to the Hokahe range from my Border Reavers army and ordered the cavalry I didn't have because I liked the figures so much. Um, and that will give me eight more units of cavalry for the Scottish army, making it um, almost twice as big as it ought to be. I may then increase the, the English army to match it. Or if I want to field everything, I'll, the English use German mercenaries. I can give them some land checks or something I don't know but I'm going to get the cavalry done as a sort of little side project before I do the Ottomans the Koreans and samurai um, I'm going to take a break from this 
Um, I'm currently deciding whether to do American Civil War or Franco-Prussian War. So um, I'll decide that in a in the coming weeks while I'm painting my uh, my Scottish cavalry, and let you know. Until then, um, I think this Renaissance warfare project is essentially finished. There'll be a few buildings coming, and maybe some odd add-ons here and there. But um, as far as its uh, its status of owning my painting table. Um, it's been just under a year. I think I started in November, might have been October. Um, here we are midway through September. Uh, very happy with how it's progressed. Um, enjoyed the games we've had so far. Uh, I will um, try and film some games, uh, which will be added to this series. For now, the project's done. So, um, thank you for coming with me on this journey. Um, I hope you found found it enjoyable interesting um, or at least some of it enjoyable and interesting um, thank you very much for watching uh, I do appreciate it please do like share subscribe uh, leave a comment I'll be back uh, end of the month with uh, a new painting update and uh, by then I should know what the next project is going to be and uh, I'll launch into that and this time I hope to film it from the very beginning and uh, and see where that takes me for now then it's farewell from uh, from my renaissance project and um, i look forward to seeing you next time mm -hmm.